Okay, examples five and six for related rates. Another ladder problem, but this one is, looks like we're going to be involved with an angle here, and an angle with the ground. Some people mess up what angle we're talking about, but if you read the problem carefully, it tells you what angle we're dealing with. So 13 foot ladder, the angle with the ground is the one we're going to be worried about or looking at. The ladder now is falling down the wall at a constant rate of 0.5 feet per second. At what rate is the angle between the ladder and the ground, ladder, ground, angle between the ladder and the ground? Again, read the problem carefully. <coughs> Don't be the person that comes up to me during the test and says, which angle do I use? And I'm going to say, read the question. It tells you which angle to use. At what rate is the angle between the ladder and the ground? That one right there. Changing. Oops, so that's we're looking for d theta dt. When the top of the ladder is five feet from the ground, Indicate units of measure. I could do units of measure right now. What do we measure angles in? Degrees. Um, degrees is one option, but it's almost always radians now. So this is going to be in radians per whatever time unit is per second. So I've hardly worked any of the problem, and I've got one point of the, of the points to be had because I know what the unit's going to be already radians per second. Okay, I need to put an A, B, and C on here. Just out of habit, I keep putting A at the bottom and B on the side. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, C matters. Um, so, let's make sure we understand what we're given here. Something is 0.5 feet per second. Um, what's 0.5 feet per second given my picture that I drew? What, what is that? The BDT, and it's negative. You, you have to be super careful with the negatives on this because rarely does it say negative. It's either decreasing or losing water or falling down. So you've got to read to understand that it's negative. Okay, now I need an equation that has B in it and it has theta in it. So I need an equation with B and theta. Think of a, an angle relationship that has B in it. There's actually three of them, but one of them is a better choice than the others. So looking at that angle, B is the opposite side. So that means I could use uh, tangent and go opposite and adjacent. Or I could use sine and go opposite and hypotenuse. They're both legitimate. One's just going to be a whole lot easier than the other. Do you know which one we should use? Um, why sine? Yeah, we, we've got to use an opposite. So let me just write them both. Sine of theta is B over 13. Tangent of theta is B over A. So both of those are completely correct. And you really could use uh, either one. But when it comes to taking a derivative, like the left-hand side, OK, it is what it is. You've got to take that derivative. But the right-hand side, if I take the derivative of this, it would require the quotient rule. And I'd have to know dA dt. So it's not wrong, it's just really ugly. So pick the one that has a constant in it, or use a ratio that, that uses a constant. That way our derivative will be much easier. OK, derivative sign is, let me call on people and see if you'll make the same mistake I did, or if you learn from my mistake. So derivative of sine, Justin, I gave you a part of the answer. Uh, um, 
for sign. Oh, uh, theta, and is it, um, y prime? Um, but that's not y. Theta prime? Theta prime, or, which would be okay, but d theta dt would probably be a little bit clearer. Seth, how about the other side? What's the derivative of, I'll even make it easier for you maybe, what's the derivative of 1 13th b? Mm. So the 1 13th just goes along for the ride. What's the derivative of, of you got it now? The derivative of b would just be 1, but then chain rule, b prime, or let's go db dt. Okay, let's see if I have all my pieces here. db dt, we know. 1 13th is fine. d theta dt is what we're looking for. Cosine of theta, I don't know yet, but it did say that the top of the ladder is 5 feet from the ground. Five feet from the ground, so this is another 5, 12, 13 triangle. What's, how do you find the cosine of theta? This is back to geometry cosine. So katoa, what ratio is cosine? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse, so katoa. d theta dt is what we're looking for. 13th dp dt is negative. Uh, I'm going to switch it to one half just because everything else is in fractions. But negative 0.5 is fine. So let's multiply both sides by 13 over 12. So d theta dt then is 13's cancel. Negative 1 over 24, and we already said radians per second. Okay, anytime we get a negative, we need to, it doesn't mean it's wrong, but it probably means we need to stop and think and see if that makes sense. Given what's going on in our, in our picture here, this ladder is sliding down, what's happening to our angle? It's getting smaller, so it makes sense that this is negative. And so don't, don't be worried if you get a negative, but do see if it makes sense in the context of the problem. Austin? Awesome. On the right side of the equation, how did you get 13 over 12? Um, I multiplied both sides by 13 over 12 so that to get d theta dt by itself. Okay. Dylan? Will they all be regular like triangles in this test? Like the 5, 12, 13? Um... I don't want to say always, forever, will they always be, but almost always, 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, that's about it. Right, they're trying to help you out here. This problem's hard enough without you having to go actually do A squared plus B squared equals C squared with weird numbers. But if they did, you would know how to do it. It would just add to the problem. Again, AP, on, on the AP test, they... They throw you little little things like this that kind of gives you a feel that, all right, I think I'm on the right track because that, that worked out nice, especially on a no-calculator problem. Yeah, with calculator, like, all bets are off. You're going to get ugly numbers. Anything else on example five? Good questions. Number six. A six-foot-tall man, this is another classic problem. Uh, a six foot tall man walks at a rate of five feet per second toward, so that gives us a direction. I don't know if it's positive or negative yet. depends on how we define things. A 16 foot tall light pole. Uh, let's see here. So here's my 16 foot tall light pole chance to show off your artistic abilities here. 
Let's see. Okay, so the the five foot tall man, six foot tall man, is walking toward the light pole. When the man is ten feet from the base of the pole, sixteen. I'm trying to draw my picture like you know reasonably to scale. Man's ten feet from the base of the pole. He's six feet tall, so something like that. At what rate is the length of his shadow changing? Okay, so here's the light. Here's the shadow. In fact, let's let's label that. There to there is S. Let's call that. That's the shadow. So we want to find DSDT. Okay. Let's see. The guy's six feet tall. I think there's a a number I put on there that maybe I shouldn't have put on there because it's changing. Ten. <coughs> so we'll use 10, but that's not always 10. Like the guy's walking this way at 5 feet per second. So I don't want to call that 10. I want to call that something else. Um, what do you want to call it? A, D, whatever. Uh, a, a works fine. This might be A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I don't think it's that, though. I think it's. I think there's like some ratio thing going on here. Um, so now that I've labeled that A, what is this 5 feet per second? The ADT. And is it positive or negative? What's A doing? Is A getting bigger or smaller? Smaller, so that means the ADT is negative. Okay. So my man, is a, he's not changing height. The light pole is not changing. A is changing, S is changing, and we want to find the SDT. But I need some equation that relates <coughs> A and S. Because I know DADT, I want to find the SDT. Well, it looks like there are similar triangles. Speaking of geometry. So there's one with S and 6 in it, maybe. Right. Be careful. Don't do like triangle to trapezoid. Right. Don't do that. You got to make sure you go in triangle to triangle. Get through my orange pen. There it is. I can write ratios in orange and green now. Uh, I think the easiest ratio is s to six. Like in the in the green triangle, s goes to six. As now, what's that same ratio or same side ratio in the orange triangle? A plus, A plus S to 16. So there's my equation. I don't, I think I want to change that up a little bit. I don't want to take a derivative of it right now. I think I want to do cross multiplying just to make life a little easier. In fact, I can make life a lot easier. 10s equals 6a. f to 6, s plus a to 16. Uh, I'm wanting dsdt to show up, so I need to take a derivative of both sides. So, uh, Avery, how about the left-hand side? What do I get? 10 DSDT. Good. And Caden, the other side? 6 DSDT. Okay, and I know, I'm looking for DSDT. I know DADT. So DSDT equals 6 times... Negative 5 
of divided by 10. And this is a free response question, so I could leave it at that. But that's pretty easy. That's negative 3. It didn't ask for units, but just to be in good practice here, S is a length, so that's feet. And the time unit in the problem is seconds, feet per second. And then I guess the question is, does it make sense that that is negative? Yeah. Go outside under a street light at night and figure this one out. But yeah, as he, as he gets closer over here, when the guy's right here with his super small head, yeah, his shadow would be much, much shorter. So I, I believe that negative is right. His shadow is getting shorter as he walks toward the, the light pole. So, ladder problems, shadow problems, and geometry problems. I guess those are like the, the three main... Uh, I guess they're all geometry. I don't, I'm hesitant to say there's three types. But ladders is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But we can also do d theta dt. Shadows, we use similar triangles from geometry. And then the other just geometry problems where they give you a formula. I feel like that's that's the majority of the of the related rates problems. Definitely ladders, frequently shadows, and then some other we just give you the sphere or a cone or a cylinder and go from there. Right, let's look at the worksheet packet again. And so Tuesday the official assignment was 1 through 5. Today the official assignment is 6 through 17. I will say, if, if you've looked ahead, when you get to number 18, it says these problems are optional. Some are just additional problems. Some of these take related rates a step further. Um, some came directly from past AP exams. But the big thing is they're optional. If you do 1 through 17 and you're feeling good, then hey, you're good. If you're struggling, then maybe try some of those. Yeah. Let's look at. <clears throat> so we start at number six. That's a ladder problem. Seven's uh, another light post problem with the man walking. Eight's a light post problem. Let's do number nine. A cube of ice is melting in such a way that it maintains its cubic shape. If each edge of the cube is decreasing at a rate of two millimeters per minute, uh, also decreasing. What is decreasing probably going to mean? Probably going to be negative somewhere. At what rate is the volume changing? Find dv dt. When v equals 27. <coughs> Indicate units of measure. Oh, let's just go ahead and do units right now before we forget about it. So units of measure for dv dt, Brooke, what are those units going to be? What are the units of volume going to be? Um, if we're in millimeters cubed and dt, is time, and for this problem, what time unit are we using? Minutes. All right, so there's one point for the problem already taken care of. Our answer is going to be millimeters cubed per minute. How is the volume changing? The volume is millimeters cubed, time is in minutes. Okay, well, I'm going to need... I'm going to need an equation for volume so that I can get dv dt. Uh, it didn't give me the volume of a cube, but surely you don't need to be given the volume of a cube. <laughs> or maybe you do, based on some of the faces I see. Let's 
see. Volume? Like length times width times height, but for a cube, the length and the width and the height, they're all the same. So what's the volume of this cube? S cubed. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what order. I could take a derivative, but I don't have everything written down yet. The edge of the cube is decreasing by two millimeters per minute. So Dylan, what in terms of my problem, my variables, what is two millimeters per minute? The VDT is what we're looking for. That's the change in volume. Two millimeters per minute is the edge of the cube. So which variable represents the edge of the cube? In my picture, S, the SDT. And then there's one more issue with that that is negative because it's decreasing. Correct. Millimeters is mm. Uh, okay, I think we're ready to take the derivative of volume now, which means let's, let's pick on some more people here. Holly, how about the left-hand side? I'm taking the derivative of both sides with respect to t. that? DVDT. You got the easy side. <laughs> Luke gets the harder side. Uh, 3s squared ds over dt. Good. 3s squared. Tempted to stop there, but he knew better. ds dt. Okay. DVDT, that's what we're looking for. 3 is fine. S. I don't know S. Do you know DSDT? How can I figure out what S is? Yeah, it gave me the volume is 27. So that means S is 3. So now I can plug in all the pieces. 3 times 3 squared times negative 2. And this one is a free response question, so I am going to leave it like that. Three is twenty-seven. What's that, McKenna? Um, oh, I could. I mean, I could just box it right up here and say, "There's my units." But you're right; it would probably be better if we put it down here, millimeter cubed per minute. So the the volume is decreasing at fifty-four millimeter cubed per minute. Uh, negative. Yeah, that makes sense because we're melting, so the, the cube's getting smaller. We're losing volume. Number 10, a spherical balloon is being inflated at a rate of 12 in cubic inches per second. How fast in inches per second? Oh, they gave us the unit here. That's nice. Is the radius changing at the moment when R equals 2? Okay, well I'm going to let you work a chunk of this one. But first, um, McKenna, when it tells me something is 12 inches cubed per second, what is that? Like what value, what variable is it giving me there? Um, it's a rate, so it's definitely D something DT. Well, look at the units. Um. <laughs> uh, you're right. This one doesn't explicitly say. Most of the time it says what it's doing. But what would be measured in cubic inches? A volume. So this is dv dt is 12 inches cubed per second. How 
how fast is the radius changing? So that question means what are we, Johnny, what are we looking for? Good. Find the RDT. When R equals 2. And then it's kind enough to give you the volume expression. So why don't you see if you can finish that one off? Take a derivative of V, and then I think you have everything you need to plug in and see what you get. If this was a free response question, would this be a safe stop? You, yeah, you got to solve for whatever it's asking for. Like everything's plugged in, but you haven't solved for DRDT yet. So if we move some things around, oh, that's still not a safe stop. I need to get 16, or need to get DRDT by itself. That would be a safe stop, 12 over 16 pi. But you make it that far, divide top and bottom by 4, reduce the fraction, 3 over 4 pi. That one was on the, the easier side of things. I hope you thought that one was on the easier side of things. Um, let's see, 11 is pretty similar, except it's a, no, it's still a sphere. It's melting instead of growing. Um, so that's probably going to be negative somewhere. Um, number 12, paint spills on the floor in a circular pattern. What formula do you think we'll need for number 12? Pi r squared. Uh, 13 gives you the formula for that cylindrical tank thing. Let's do number 14. Oil is leaking from a hole in a cylindrical tank. Workers notice that the oil level is decreasing at a rate of 0.02 meters per hour. Okay, so somewhere this, this oil, this tank has a leak. Um, there's the height of the oil. They measure and find the tank has a circumference of 24 meters. That seems weird. Why wouldn't they just tell us the radius? But on the other hand, if you think about an open tank like that, it would be really hard to measure to find the radius, right? Because you'd have to know where the middle of the tank was. And if it's this huge tank, like you're trying to fish your tape measure out into the middle, you're not going to know where that is. So it's a whole lot easier to measure the circumference. Even measuring the diameter might be hard because you have to make sure you're measuring a diameter, not a chord. These are geometry words. So it seems weird they would give you the circumference, but when you think about if you actually wanted to measure this tank, the circumference would be the easiest and most accurate thing to measure. So that's why we get 24 meters. Okay, something is 0 0.02 meters per hour. 0 0.02 meters per hour. Abby, what's what's 0 0.02 meters per hour? Like, what do I want to label that with? What is that? It's a rate, so it's something dt. So what in my picture is changing? So it wouldn't be the volume, it would be the 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 height or the depth of the of the oil. So the height of the oil is going down. Whoops, so what am I why am I saying oops? What have I forgotten here? Negative. Decreasing the height is going down. Volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. Yep, we got that. 
how much oil has drained from the tank in the 10 hours since the leak was noticed? How much oil? Units of measure. Okay, well, I can do units of measure now because how much is the volume? So the volume is going to be meter cubed. Let's see how much. Uh, I, I'm bugged by this circumference. I want to find the radius because I'm going to need that several times. So, um, what's the circumference equal to? Like, what's the equation for circumference? Geometry experts. Two pi r. So twenty four over two pi r would be twelve over pi. Okay, how much oil has drained? So this is not asking me for dv dt. That's the next question. So I'll need a derivative for the next question. But I don't really need a derivative for the first question. I've just got to understand what it's asking and how to get it. So in, in 10 hours, I guess I could figure out how much, what, what's the level gone down by in that 10 hours? 10 hours times 0.02 meters per hour would mean my level has gone down by 0.2 meters. So I'm, I'm missing <coughs> 0.2 meters of oil. Now, that's not the answer because that's a height, not a volume. Can you say that? Yeah. Are you okay with where the, the 0.2 came from? Yeah. This is almost a unit <coughs> thing. If I multiply the hours will go away and I'm left with 0.2. It's going down by 0.2 every hour. And then, so you're just times it. So I'm just times it by 10, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, okay. 0 and so on. After 10 hours, I've lost 0.2 meters of oil. The, the height has gone down by 0.2. Still not the question, though. So think about this. How much, if, I'm, if we lost 0.2, now let's figure out how much oil are we missing. Like the missing oil volume. It's still pi r squared h, and I've got r. I know what pi is. What will I use for h? If I'm trying to find the, the missing oil, I want the missing h. Right, like there's, there's the amount of oil that went missing. And we said that H was 0.2. So we use 0.2 to sort of account for that missing uh, cylinder of oil. It's, it's not in a cylinder anymore, like it leaked out the bottom somewhere. But that's how much we missed, is that that cylinder of oil is not there anymore. It's uh, made a mess on the shop floor here. R is 12 over pi squared times 0.2. And that's, that's good enough, right? This is a safe stop problem. So meter cubed. So I don't want to be squaring pi and multiplying by 0 0.2. Like, nah, leave that alone. Um, obviously, if this is a, um, like a real world problem and like there's a leak at the plant, then you're going to get your calculator out and figure out, well, how many gallons is that? Um, but for now, we'll just leave it like that. At what rate is the volume decreasing? So V equals pi r squared h. So I need to take a derivative. Um, derivative of the left-hand side is easy, dv dt. Of the right-hand side... Say it, it might look hard, but it's easier than it looks. How many variables, let me phrase it this way, how many variables are on the right-hand side? Let's think about what the definition of variable means. How many of those quantities are varying? Let me ask it that way. One, which one is not varying? The R. 
So in this problem, r is not a variable. It's not changing. It's a constant. So that means I can leave it alone and just treat it as a constant, because it is a constant. It's not changing. The h is changing. The h is the only variable. And then I'm basically there. I just plug in the, the pieces here. Pi, 12 over pi squared. dh dt was negative 0.02 and then meter cubed per whatever our time was here, hour. Just got to be careful. Not, not all letters are variables. Not all letters are variables. We use those interchangeably, but we should be careful about that. In this problem, R isn't changing. It's not varying. It's a constant. So we only have to account for the HDT and what's changing. Um, let's do one more together. 15. A water tank in the shape of an inverted cone has an altitude Altitude. You know what that means? You know what that measures? It's height. There's a height of 18 and a base radius of 12. If the tank is full and water is drained at a rate of 4 cubic feet per minute, Uh, so, Ambria, what's what's four feet cubed per minute in terms of variables? DV, DT. Anything else we should say about that four? If it's drained, it should be negative. We might have caught that at the end. Um, maybe, maybe not. How fast in feet per minute is the water level dropping? So what are we trying to find? The H dt when H is six feet tall, or I guess not tall, six feet deep maybe, when H is six. On that last problem, it was a cylinder, so the radius wasn't changing. On this problem, it's a cone, so the radius is changing. The h is changing, so I have two variables, which means, do you remember what, what we'll try to do here to account for this? Okay, I can... I could do the quotient rule, but then I have, I mean, the product rule, but then I have DRDT and DHDT. Ugh, no, thank you. If I could come up with a relationship between R and H, maybe I could replace one of them. What do you mean divide both of them by two? I could divide both by three. Um, what I want to get is some R equals something times H. So what number goes there so that it, this number times H gets me R? Two-thirds. Because two-thirds of 18. Maybe we should... We can do it this way. K times 18 equals R, because I want to figure out what this K is. So it's 2 thirds. Because I want R in terms of H. I want, I want R to go away. I want H in the problem, because that's what I'm being asked for. Like, you could solve this problem kind of the other way around and find the RDT, 
but that would be pointless because it asks for dhdt. So v equals one third pi. R is now two thirds h squared times h. So let's clean that up before we take a derivative. Goodness, that's going to be. Let's see if I can do it all at once. Two squared is four times pi over. What's my denominator going to be if I have a three and a three squared in the denominator? I want to. I want to take care of all of this at once. Twenty-seven. 27. So four pi over twenty-seven h cubed. Now this is much easier to take a derivative of. In fact, why don't you take it from there? Because <laughs> it can't be negative because it's not a choice for negative. Is there a way that would we could justify that our answer not being negative based on how the question is asked? It, the way it asks the question, what's what? How fast is the water level dropping? So the, the question sort of has the negative implied in it. So we wouldn't say it's dropping at a negative rate. We just say it's dropping at 1 over 4 pi. On an FRQ, would it be common wrong if you said negative? Um, I don't think this would be wrong because dHdt is negative 1 over 4 pi. So you just have to be careful if you wrote a sentence that said, uh, the water level is decreasing at negative, that would be wrong. You wouldn't lose a lot of points for that, but that would be wrong. If you said decreasing at a negative, that means increasing. So be careful if you write out a sentence to make sure it makes sense for the problem. So dHdt is negative, that's true. That means it's decreasing at 1 over 4 pi. Okay, that's enough for me. The video is long enough.